compared to a regular 320, there's no doubt that's way flatter. Yeah, so, so welcome back everybody. Hope you're doing awesome. It's so crazy, I got so many builds going on right now. I, I don't remember the last time I had this many builds kind of happening simultaneously. You know, we've been working on the 2011 build um, that I'm trying to do for dirt cheap with eBay parts and stuff like that. And so this is gonna be a fascinating build indeed. So if you haven't started watching this series, I will put a link below so you can watch it after you watch today's video. So in today's video, we are building a Sig Sauer P320 X5 Legion, that's a mouthful, but with 80% modules. Moreover than that, we're gonna build one that has a semi flush compensator. Now it's gonna look kind of multicolored at this point because this slide is a uh, sniper gray and then this Legion grip I think is some kind of tungsten color. So we might have to get things re -seracoded. but I got this really cool, interesting compensator right here that we're gonna talk about. Now there's gonna be a bunch of stuff that we need to know about this gun before we actually build it. So that's what we'll do here in a minute when we dive up close. So the X5 Legion right now, I think they retail for like 900 to thousand dollars, which is not bad. But, and I would say that the X5 Legion really competes with a lot of the 2011s, like the one that we're building. And they compete with a lot of other competition guns. And that's what this gun is made to be as a competition gun, not really so much of a self-defense or a nightstand gun. My goal is to make this shoot flatter than the actual X5 Legion. Cool thing about this is, I don't know if you guys remember the 226 Legion, the 229 Legion. When those guns came out, you couldn't find any parts for a Legion. And in fact, they were kind of exclusive, like only current Legion owners could purchase Legion parts. I think the majority of people thought that was a little bit bougie, and I think they stopped that because now, you can buy pretty much all the Legion parts separately. And don't worry, I'll have a build list for this. So if you're watching this on YouTube, follow the first link in the description. It'll take you to a separate page where this video is hosted, but over there is where I'll be able to link out to all the different products that I'm using in this, in case this is something that you wanna follow along with. Now, this channel's not new to 80% P320s by any means. We've already done a build on this. I think it was last year around this time or even the year before. I think we started it at the end of 2018. And I do have a full tutorial series on how to complete these 80% modules. However, I'm gonna do another one in today's video because these are your 80% modules and they have been updated since the previous 80% module. And I made a few mistakes in that series and I wanted to make sure that I had a series that didn't really have as many mistakes. And then this is the little jig that you put it into. Essentially, you sandwich it in into this and then it comes with all the drill bits that you need. You will need a drill press to do this. You don't wanna use a hand drill. This little top piece kind of goes into here and you basically bang it with a hammer and it flattens out the rails. The first link in the description, it'll take you to like full 30 or it'll take you to my website where you can see this video, but that video will actually have the tutorial in it not today's video on YouTube. Let's dive up close real quick. Let's go over the parts that we're using in this build. And we're gonna kind of go over a little bit of, you know, what I'm using, why I'm using the parts I'm using, and what we're gonna be doing moving forward. All right, guys, so let's go over the parts real quick that we're gonna be using in this epic build. Um, I'm not the first person to do this build. Um, however, I am the first person to do this 80% wise, especially on YouTube. And so let's go over the parts that we're using and then we're gonna start talking about how to actually make this stuff happen. But the tutorial will also be located where the build list is located. So it's just the first link in the description. But what we are gonna do is I wanted to show you guys some things that were very interesting about the Sig Sauer X5 Legion frame. Some of the stuff that I expected about it just didn't turn out to be true. And then we're gonna go over the parts we're using. And then if you're watching this on YouTube, you're gonna see the final product um, without having to watch through the entire tutorial. 80% builds are not new to this channel and neither are 80% P320 builds. I've done one of these so far and I've, I've probably made about four or five different P320 uh, videos. Now, most of them were based on the P320 X carry. And just to be really honest with you, P320s have just never been a gun for me. Not that they're bad guns, just they weren't quite for me. However, I think this one might actually change my mind. I'm actually very optimistic that this one will change my mind. This is what, this is what it's called the MUP, M-U-P. I don't even remember what that stands for. I'm, I'm kind of tired right now, but and the way that this works is you get this cool little jig right here. You got these screws here. This thing has been used like three or four times, so. Forgive it for being all beat up and stuff. Uh, but it used to have four screws, I accidentally stripped one out. But essentially this goes inside of here 
And then here is the guide for all of your holes that you got to drill. You get a ton of different drill bits, one for each hole basically. The other thing is that's interesting is this part right here is your rails. And what's weird about that is you're like, well, why are they sticking straight up? That's because when this is actually sitting in here, you take this piece right here and it goes down in there. And the reason you're seeing all these like chunks missing is because I accidentally used a hammer that had a, you know, teeth in the front of it. But basically you set this on top and you hammer it down, which, you know, we're going to go through here in a minute. Um, you hammer it down and then that bends your rails so that they start folding out sideways. Very interesting little thing. I've done one in the past and it worked, but I wanted to do a new one today. So we'll get to that in a minute. Let's go over the parts. So for the parts, we have P320 trigger group parts kit. We have takedown pin, takedown lever thingy majigger. We also have slide parts. And uh, for upgraded parts, I purchased the Sig Sauer X5 trigger and I'm using the Apex Tactical Enhanced Trigger Bar. Cool thing about this is I already have the Apex Trigger in my other P320, so you can actually get these trigger bars without the trigger shoe. So I thought that was kind of cool. Also, I got another couple of other cool little upgraded goodies. I got these little trigger springs, they're super hard to see, from Tactical Pontoon, he sent these out to me. So I'm gonna be testing those out, to see how they run. Another upgraded part we got is the DPM Multiple Springs Recoil Reduction System for the P320 Compact Carry. And the reason we got it for the Compact Carry is as you can see here by this slide, we are not using a full size slide. We are actually using a compact slide. This one is from my good friends at Norso. I've been working with them for a long time and I've already made videos on this slide. I actually have this one in one of their other P320 slides. And uh, so I just thought that this one looked really good with this Legion frame right here. So we're gonna be using this, but the cool thing is I definitely have a 5% off promo code for Norso. So that works for anything on their website. Then you're gonna notice this little compensator system here. And I'm sure some of you guys have seen these floating around. These are from a company called Parker Mountain Machine. And essentially what they've done is they've created a compensator that works with a shortened proprietary threaded barrel. And the barrels are made by Fax and Firearms, even though they don't have the Fax and Firearms logo on it. So they're definitely good barrels. The reason that they have a proprietary barrel is I don't know if you've seen P320 threaded barrels, but they're like, they stick out like that far past the end of the muzzle, it seems like. But kind of the point of this is to build something when it's in battery, although it's not 100% flush, that it, it takes up a lot of the length in this dust cover. And they have different ones. They got single ports and then this one's a two port. Um, I got the two port design because I wanted more compensation out of it. They do sell out really quick. Um, I did buy this with my own money. I will say that. And I will tell you this, it is kind of crazy expensive. I think I paid $365 for this barrel and uh, compensator combo. And the reason I paid for it instead of, you know, asking the company to send it to me for the video series, cause you know, I don't mind doing that for a video series, especially if it's gonna bring value to a company, but they were really kind of strange towards me when I emailed them, kind of wanting me to make a video in a certain way. And I'm like, well, that's not kind of how I operate. So I just said, screw it. I'll just buy it and do the video how I wanna do it. Nothing against them, but they wanted me to do a video a certain way. So I don't have any affiliations with them or, and I don't have any promo codes for them. And these are really hard to find. I remember when I bought this one, it was literally the moment I bought it, they were out of stock. So they do have a little bit of a wait period, but I will link to them in the build list. Something I had noticed is that the P320X5 came out and then shortly after that, the P320X5 Legion came out. There's a, the cool thing though is you can buy Legion parts separately. That's something that's new. We've never been able to do that in the past unless like you were a Legion owner. However, um, these are kind of expensive. They're about 275 to $300 depending on where you get them. I will do my best to link out to some places that have these in stock. And if I can find promo codes, I will. Interesting thing I like about this is, number one, it's got this big old hunkin' magwell on the bottom of it. Um, this gun is built for competition. It isn't made, Sig Sauer didn't design it for you know self-defense. I mean, it could be used for that, but its primary goal is competition. If you'll notice here, there's a big old hunkin' weight in the back of it. That tungsten, let's get it you up close so you can see this. So it's a huge, shaft that goes down into there. And then I'm, I'm sure that this metal magwell also adds to the weight. Interesting thing I noticed about this magwell 
it's not too flimsy, but it does move. It doesn't lock on to the front strap up here. Here's what's cool about it. So this is an aftermarket P320X carry frame. If you look down in the back of this, and you're gonna notice a huge channel, big gaping channel down there. You wanna guess what that's for? Yep, you guessed it, it's for that weight. You can actually buy these weights directly from SIG and some aftermarket parts companies are carrying them as well. And you could put it in any X frame that you want to. The reason it sucks that they discontinued the X5 is because those X5 frames are gonna disappear and they were only a hundred bucks and these are like 275. So it's just a color change. I could be wrong about that, but based on my analysis and looking at both and handling both, that's the only difference. The way I'm gonna kind of break up the build list is right now you can actually buy an X5 kit. It comes with everything you need. Like there's nothing else you gotta buy, like all the jigs and everything. Um, that exists, it's not Legion. The downside to that kit is, well, you won't be able to do this. So I started doing the math and if you went out and bought a Legion or just bought an X5 kit and then you wanted to convert it to this um, with a compact slide and this compensator, it's actually gonna be more expensive than if you just built it like this from the get-go and you don't have the full-size slide and all that stuff. Let's go outside, let's start putting this thing together and let me walk you through the steps of finishing up that uh, insert. And then we're gonna put it all together and then you will see the final product of it. Then we'll see if we can actually get this bad boy to work or not. Here's what it looks like. The only thing I haven't done is made sure that the slide fits. But I figured you guys on YouTube might wanna see it. Um, we got all the parts installed. We have the X5 trigger with the Apex trigger bar. See what we see, I guess. So basically, we uh, are gonna be installing this little guy right here. This is a reduced powered recoil spring. And I went through the directions with this, and to be honest, it doesn't tell me what spring is what weight. I just have three springs here. We have two silver springs, one's longer and one's shorter. And then we have a copper spring and one's longer, one shorter. This one feels pretty weak, we'll use that one. Um, basically, this is supposed to reduce recoil on guns. And because I'm trying to make this like a super flat shooting gun, I wanted to test this out. With this guide rod, you're gonna have two flat sides and then you're gonna have two radius sides or curved sides. You want the flat sides to be on the, si on the side and then the radius touching the barrel and pointing down. At least that's what they said in the main. Way too wide. I mean, way too wide. Holy cow. All right, cool. So now we gotta start working on these rails. And with the power of editing, it is now finished. All right, cool. So this is what it looks like all together. Um, let me get my trigger pull gauge so we can actually test these uh, lightened springs for the trigger just to see how it feels. But I can tell you this, it 100% feels really good. Very little take up. There's the break. There's the reset. And there's the break. It feels quite a bit lighter than it did before. I'm thinking it's about three and a half to four pounds, but let's do a trigger pull test just to find out. Get this on here. I'm gonna hold this shoe towards the bottom. I'm not gonna help the shoe, but I kinda have to hold it there so it doesn't move. So right there, looks like we got about three point, looks like it's about 3.3 .3 pounds. So let's try another one just for comparison's sake. And then that one was right at three and a half pounds. I'm gonna try it with a snap, snap cap and then try it with the magazine installed just to see if that makes a difference. So it does pull lower when the magazine's installed and when there's a snap cap, that one's about 3.1 pounds. The uh, 20 something round mag in there. Looks very good. Um, all the function checks are passing. Um, one thing I will tell you is this, whenever you're doing these 80% P320 builds, this is another module that I've done a long time ago and uh, this one didn't really work out. Um, so I always kind of kept it as a way so I could use it for example purposes. But basically with this one, I made a little bit of a boo-boo in this little section right here. And basically what would happen was, this is where we drill it. And then we have to cut that little section here. I accidentally cut this part, even though there's a jig there, I think in my tool slip, this was from about a year ago. I cut this part a little bit wrong. 
or a little bit short. And what happens is the trigger actually won't even stay in there. So I say that to say this, you know, these little trigger modules and these jigs and stuff like that, um, they are very good, but they're not 100% foolproof. Two things that I will tell you is you absolutely want to see if you can buy a second set of drill bits. That way, if you break a drill bit, you're not up the creek without a paddle. And then number two, I'm, I might even go as far as recommending buying an additional MUP insert just in case you mess up on one kind of like this because I've been trying to figure out how to fix this little hole here so that the trigger does stay in, but unfortunately that doesn't work. So the goal with this is definitely to be more of a competition gun. One thing I will tell you is with all the parts installed, even without a magazine, this grip is incredibly heavy in a good way. Uh, meaning I can already tell that this huge tungsten weight that's in here is going to mitigate recoil. I can just feel it, hadn't even shot it yet. Um, I, I think it's gonna be a lot of fun with this Norso slide and this Parker Mountain Machine Compensator. Um, I also got X-ray SIG sights on here. I might change them, but I've always liked that green front dot. But I'm super excited to go out and shoot this and just see how it feels. But let's jump up top real quick. There's a few other things I need to go over before we wrap up today's video. Back up top. All right, cool. So that's in a nutshell how you build it. Um, if you watch this on you know, full 30 or something, there was a tutorial there for you. It's actually not too bad. A couple of things that I wanted to keep in mind that you understand when you're building these is just like building a 1911 or anything else, you're probably gonna have to fit some of the parts. Um, when I built my original one, I did have to file the rails a little bit to make sure that they fit correctly. Um, so you might have to file some things to make sure that the tolerances are correct. Don't expect this to be like a polymer 80. Because we're working with metal and not plastic, things are gonna be a little bit more difficult, but it's not that bad, it really isn't. The hardest part of this entire thing is actually putting the parts and pieces onto the module. That, that part can be a little bit tedious, but if you follow my directions, you shouldn't have a problem with it. So I'm super excited to go out and test this, which we'll be doing in the next video. I do think if we can get this all Cerakoted on the slide and this compensator to be the same color as this, I think that would actually make it look really good. One thing you should know about these barrels, they're actually made by Faxon Firearms. So Faxon makes phenomenal stuff. They make Glock barrels, m and barrels, P320 barrels. They make a ton of AR barrels. And I love their quality. It's kind of hard to argue with it. Now, if somebody else would have made these barrels, like somebody that, that I've never heard of, I would be a little upset at the price of this. But because Faxon made it, I think it's not a bad choice. Because if you went and bought a Faxon P320 barrel, they're like $250, I think, for a threaded one. Then you went out and bought a $100 compensator you'd be at about the same price. So it's not that bad. Now, one thing is interesting. This is my first time using an actual Sig Sauer P320 um, trigger um, that, from the X5. And I will say, I like it a lot. I like the wall and everything. I was gonna put an Apex trigger in it, but I emailed Apex. They said their triggers weren't compatible with the Legion. And I'm like, well, I'm not using a Legion frame. I'm just using a standard P320 frame. They didn't email me back, but I tried it with my P320 trigger. And it worked just like it did with any other P320. So I don't know what they were referring to when they said that their triggers aren't compatible with this. But when they said that, I just went out and bought this. It's just a trigger shoe that you put into it. And I do have it paired up with the Apex Tactical um, Trigger Enhancement Kit. So I've had, you know, so far so good, at least for dry firing. Now here in the very near future, we're actually gonna take this frame right here that we built. And I've actually already purchased a Legion slide now these legion slides are super hard to find for a good price in fact if you're going to buy a legion slide just go buy the legion don't even worry about building it um, because if you go buy the slide you go buy this frame and then you do the 80 percent build it's going to cost quite a bit more than if you just bought it however with that said if you are going to be doing something like the flush comp build it is going to be cheaper to build it versus buying it and then converting it so that's just kind of how the math works out. But I went and bought it just for the video series. So here it is with the original Legion slide on it. A couple of things I don't like about this slide. Number one is the optic cut. It's literally only cut for the Leopold Delta Point Pro. And in this day and age with the Glock MOS system and with the MMP modular optic system and with the CZ modular optic system and with the STI, modular optic system, why the hell did you pick Leopold Delta Point Pro? I mean, wh what were you thinking? Like, so let's just be real here. Nothing against the Leopold Delta Point Pro. It's a great optic. It's battery life sucks. It's a great optic for competition use, which I mean, obviously this is what this gun is designed for, 
But why not Trijicon? Because with Trijicon, I can use the Holo Sun sights. Now, in their defense, you can go out and buy additional plate systems, adapter plates.